Just saving more won't solve your money problems. But we'll tell you what will. Hi, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we bring you videos on practical frugality. In 2022, rising prices really created in people sort of this mm -hmm. anxiety of feeling like, I need to save more money, I need to save more money. And that in of itself is a laudable thing. We all should yeah. save more money. Here's where the problem comes in. If you look at the world as a whole and continually find yourself thinking, if I just had more money, and the problem with that line of thinking is just having more money or just saving more money doesn't necessarily solve your money problems. But in this video, we'll give you some hope and some help because we're going to run through some solutions for some common misperceptions about saving money and some problem mindset blocks. And we're gonna help you break through those and we're gonna show you what actually really does work. So here's the first reason, or maybe we could call it roadblock mm -hmm. to having savings work for you. If your spending habits haven't changed, you're going to end up buying things impulsively mm -hmm. and you'll spend more money than you have that's coming home in your paycheck. The solution is obvious. It's the B word, budget. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> budget, that B word. It's that monthly spending plan that a lot of people think, oh my gosh, it's like a straight jacket. I just can't do it. But you know, we would challenge you to flip that around on its side and say it is not actually a straight jacket. What it is, is a plan that gives you freedom to spend because then you know exactly what you can spend in each area of your budget. And it's actually been super freeing for us to be able to spend the money and not feel guilty about it. You know, I kind of equate this to driving without a map. Can you imagine mm -hmm. driving without a map or in most cases, GPS on your car, <laughs> navigation? You wouldn't know where you're going. You would have no goals set and you would just be kind of driving aimlessly, wasting a lot of gas. And if you're running your money without a budget, that's what you're doing. It's like driving without a map. But speaking about budgets, January is always that time of the year where people feel like this is the really important time for them to get their finances under control. So on this channel in January, we're really gonna focus on providing some solutions and some answers for your questions about budgeting. But for us to do that, we really need to know what your questions are. <laughs> so would you do us a super big favor, drop in the comments section your questions that you would love to have us answer about budgeting. Before we move on, I just want to say one more thing about budgets. When you create a monthly budget, you create a clear way to track your mm -hmm. spending. Once you track your spending, you can get a good firm handle on it. It becomes really clear in very short order. And that's what was so amazing for us about budgeting was it became super clear to us not only where we were spending our money, but where we were spending money that we shouldn't necessarily have been spending money. For us, that first budget oh, yeah. was definitely, it was the eating out too much revelation <laughs> for us. It was a real eye opener. And that's what helped us to start to get our spending under control so that the money that we were bringing yeah. home would go farther. But I think the most important thing was until we actually saw it in writing, the thing with your brain is <laughs> when you see it in front of you, in big numbers, you can't unsee it. Once we saw that grand total at the end of that very first month of budgeting, yeah. I mean, our jaws dropped. They did, because we literally had no idea we were spending that much money going out to eat. But that is exactly what a monthly spending plan will do for you. Yeah, and we found out we were spending too much on groceries. And yeah. we started to really pare that back. We were just buying whatever looked good. We All weren't even stuff. We weren't even <laughs> planning on how much to buy at the grocery store. Hey, this looks good, just throw it in the cart. The second roadblock that you might actually be dealing with is you might be believing that you will never have enough. And if you believe you will never have enough, guess what? You will never have enough. 
You know, there's an interesting statistic that we ran across. 63% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. And many of those are people that make $100,000 a year. Now, if that's the case, they're certainly making enough <laughs> money to live very well, have a good savings plan, and really be kind of on velvet. But be, I think it's because of not planning that those Americans are living that way. And we don't have to live that way. Now, in case you want to know, the actual statistics is 49% of Americans making $100,000 or more a year say that they have trouble meeting their monthly financial obligations. Now, we fully and completely recognize that living in the Midwest, we are so blessed yeah. <laughs> because the cost of housing is Way re down. very reasonable. Yeah, if yeah. you live on one of the coasts, the East Coast or the West Coast, your cost of housing is much, much higher than ours is here in the Midwest. So we're not discounting it, but what we are saying is that it's important, no matter how much money you make, here's your solution, to know that you are tracking what you are spending and you're able to do what we call fill the holes. Okay, here's the analogy. <laughs> All of us have our money in a great big like bowl, but it's like a colander. So there are those tiny holes where you're going to get things that are slipping through. In this case, that's those dollars and dimes and pennies and nickels that you're not actually tracking. That's what's coming through those holes in your big colander of money every single month. So the solution is to figure out where the holes are and to plug the holes. The next roadblock to saving is seeing it as a deprivation. Oh, I'm putting all this money away and I'm depriving myself of all the nice things that I should be able to enjoy that other people seem to be enjoying. If you see it that way, you're probably going to give up and not continue the plan. We've said this repeatedly on this channel that frugality is not about deprivation. It is about choosing when where and how you're going to spend your money so that when something comes up that you really, really want or really, really need, you have the money available to pay for that item. So let us give you like a super quick example. Uh, we recently started looking on Airbnb. We are planning <laughs> our next vacation. And the reason we're able to do that is because we knew in 2022, we wanted to take a vacation in 2023. So we actually have a sinking fund all set up. It's fully funded and it's ready for us to spend that money on our vacation this summer. Now, if you're wondering what a sinking fund is, it's actually a really super great way to sort of categorize your money and set money aside for future goals. We did a video on it. So in case you're unfamiliar with it, you wanna learn more about it, we're gonna make sure that that video is listed up above and also in the description of the video. One of the ways that we try to cope with that deprivation mm -hmm. idea is focus on the atmosphere in your home of mm -hmm. being that of one of abundance. If you focus on the blessings that you have, the things that you have in your house that you enjoy, the things that you're able to do, rather than the things that you're not able to do, then you'll have that mindset that will give you a, mm -hmm. basically a state of contentment in mm -hmm. what you have. And that's very important for having money-saving goals. The other thing that we really focused on when it comes to abundance and being grateful for what we do have is we deliberately found ways that we could bless other people. Because when you do that, it really takes your mind off of yourself and puts that on other people, knowing that you, no matter how much money you make, believe me, you can be a blessing to those around you. So when you're able to do that, it reminds you of what you really, really do have and how much you are blessed. This next concept is just a little bit more of a concrete one mm -hmm. that will kind of keep you from saving money. If you don't have specific goals for your savings, then you'll end up spending it. It's amazing how before we started doing this, yeah. we would have a big, sort of speak, pot of gold <laughs> sitting here in the middle of the table without any real plans for it. And there's always something that seems to come up on the horizon that pulls at that amount of money. Yeah. It pulls at it from one direction or the other. And before you know it, 
that money pot is gone because you've just spent it and you, and you kind of don't know where it all went. But if you have goals and you set some absolute uh, specific ideas of where you want that money to go, then it will go there. That's exactly what we do for our sinking funds. We set a goal, we put a plan on it, we put the money in there, and now we have that for this year instead of accidentally spending that money on something that just sort of came up over the horizon. In regards to saving money and it really not necessarily getting you any further ahead in your financial plans, then the obvious solution is to set specific goals. And when we mean specific goals, we mean specific goals. Larry and I have short, medium, long-term goals. And then we also have a list of goals that we are actively working on every single quarter. We did a video a while back on how we actually set our goals. And we'll make sure that that is in the video description so you can take a look at it. Here's the next mindset switch that we had a serious amount of trouble with. If you want the inside scoop on why adopting frugality was really, really hard for us, this is it, guys. We actually love to please people and we love our family. And so for us, this was the hardest one. It is that if you're just saving a lot of money and you're not putting boundaries on your money and on your time, you will find that you have a dwindling amount of both of those things. Here's where this came up. Our families loved to go out to eat. They'd have these big dinners at maybe a smorgasbord or a specialty house. And so we were all invited, but of course we had to pay our own way. And they would do this about every two and three weeks. And man, you're, you're talking some money after a very short period of time. And we just had to tell them, you know, we love you guys, but we cannot do that with our budget and make it work. So maybe you can have a potluck at your house instead. Invite them over and have them bring a covered dish and you supply some things. And there's lots of different ways to get around this so that you're not rebuffing your family. You're just trying to put a harness on your budget. You know, nobody wants to feel like you are alienating yourself from those that you love and you want to spend time with. So I think there's the whole idea of providing alternatives uh, to them and letting them know that you really true, truly do appreciate them. You want to spend some time with them. You're just going to either do it less often. Larry's family always knew we were going to join them for major events, like if there were major birthdays, major holidays, we were going to be there. But for those dinners that happened a lot more frequently, we just weren't going to be there. Or I think one time maybe we even just joined them for dessert or we joined them for coffee afterwards. So we went to the restaurant after everybody else was done eating. So there are some really viable solutions around this. And I know from the comments section that a lot of you have been dealing with this as far as your family having these expectations for your time and money. And we do think there are a lot of ways to still let them know they are loved, they are appreciated, you really want to spend time with them, but it's not going to be at a restaurant. You know, one thing you might think about doing is creating a sinking fund yeah. just for eating out money with family, if that's what your family mm -hmm. likes to do. Create a sinking fund so that the year before you're saving up a certain amount of money, and then when they say that they want to go out to eat, you look in that sinking fund, oh, Oh, we've got $70 left. We can go out to eat with them. So that would be one way to kind of bring it under control. That, that's the most important thing that we're really talking about here is putting it under your control. Yep. I like that idea. Thank you. <laughs> Mindset shift number six. If you don't have a job for every dollar to do, then you will wind up spending those extra dollars. Boy, that sounds like a Dave Ramsey thing <laughs> right is. there. <laughs> Thank you to Dave, who has said it repeatedly on his program, but we're going to repeat it for you today. <laughs> yeah, th this is one good way to, you know, to create a system whereby money just doesn't go flying out of your, your uh, savings plan. So once you've, you kind of nail it down to, I'm going to spend this amount of money here, there, and this other place, it won't be evaporating, so to speak, and you won't know where it's going. This way, you know exactly where your money's going. I will say the first time I ever read that in a Dave Ramsey book, this whole idea of this um, 
uh, allocating a job for every dollar to do, I thought it was loony. I thought okay? it was too confining. Yes, yeah. I did. But mm -hmm. once we sort of adopted that zero-based dollar budgeting every month, and we tried it for a little while. It was one of those things. And we've talked to you about this a lot on this channel too, to be willing to flex and to try new things. That was one of those things we flexed on years ago. And I'm like, we're just gonna try it. We're gonna see how it works. And once we tried it for a few months, we found it was really super freeing to us to be able to start the month knowing that every dollar had a job to do. So for us, it really, really worked. What this kept me from doing was spending small amounts yeah. of money on things that, oh, I didn't think really mattered. How about that that candy bar in the machine at work or, yeah. or a soda here and there? That doesn't seem like a lot of money, but once again, it adds up when you multiply that spending by 365 days a year. When we went to the every dollar system, then, it, oh my gosh, I got to account for this and this isn't part of our plan. I stopped spending that kind of money. When it comes to roadblocks that will keep you from saving money in the first place, we actually did a video recently on what those roadblocks were. And once again, just like this video, guys, we didn't leave you hanging and just tell you what the roadblocks were. We gave you some practical solutions for removing the roadblocks. That video, if you haven't watched it, it's right over there and you might find it helpful.